all right, this is like a new series I'm like testing out where like I go, where like I rank every Pokemon that Ash caught in like a region. So like first we're gonna start with a Kanto, then we're gonna go to Johto, then Hoenn, then Sinnoh, then Unova, then Kalos, then Alola, and then and then maybe if like uh maybe if like Pokemon Journeys doesn't finish by then we'll probably do Galar or like, well I mean Ash didn't really catch any Pokemon Galar all he all so far like the only Galar Pokemon he caught now are just Galarian Farfetch which I which uh, hashtag Hofer is surfetched someday I mean there I mean like. There have been like a lot of like frequent episodes with like Ash and Farfetch'd, so maybe it'll evolve sometime. I don't know, and uh, and uh, Dracovish, which is very powerful, but Ash doesn't know how to use it, or he doesn't even know how powerful it is, cause it's the fossil. But whatever. All right, so yeah, so let's start off with number eleven. Number eleven is Lapras. Oh, oh, if you didn't know, I'm also I'm gonna I'm gonna be combining the Kanto and Orange Island's Pokemon that he caught into, like, into, like, this one list. So, yeah. Lapis was just, like, basically just used as, like, transportation, like, during, like, the Orange Islands and had barely any personality. I mean, all it was is that Ash saw it, like, being, like, tormented and, like, sad and stuff. So he's like, oh, I'll catch you. And he's like, don't worry, oh, you, don't worry, you can be with me and live, like, a happy life. And then later, after the, after the Orange League, he just, like, released it for, just so he could go back with his family. Okay, I get that family comes over like catching Pokemon, but seriously, you couldn't you couldn't have just like you couldn't have just like seriously Lapras like just they couldn't you, you couldn't just like let Lapras stay with Ash, you know, like that st that scenario or stereotype. No, but they didn't do that. So that's why Lapras is number eleven. Number ten is Pidgeot. Pidgeot never legitimately won a battle. Like I don't think it even defeated Team Rocket, and it's just a very basic bird Pokemon. Like, honestly, not Ash's best bird Pokemon. It's even worse than on Pheasant. And on Pheasant, it's pretty bad. Tell that to Lewis here, Zach. <laughs> He'll agree with you. Number nine is probably going to anger a lot of people. But number nine is Butterfree. Butterfree was, like, released for a bad reason. Just so we can go with, like, a female Butterfree. Like, and, like, kind of like the other released Pokemon. Like, the other is kind of like a stupid... They, they kind of just, like, have, like, a theme. Like, they all get released for, like, a stupid reason that, like, that the writers did not include it, but they did... For some reason. But, like, still. It's still a fan favorite, and I do really like Butterfree. But when you think about it, it actually kind of makes sense to, like, Ash would, like, release Butterfree. Because Ash didn't really do much of Butterfree. I mean, the only, like, big thing that we can take from Butterfree is that, like, it evolved from Caterpie to Butterfree. In, like, in, like, three episodes. And I guess it was, like, in a couple of gym battles. But, like, other than that, they... Ash and Butterfree didn't have that many, like, uh didn't have that many uh didn't have that many moments together all right number eight is muck muck it was barely used at all and only won a single battle like that was against like a i think her name was Jeanette during the indigo league where like like it defeated her bell sprout that took out both that took out both bulbasaur and pikachu so that's actually a kind of a big deal but really he only had one other battle against, like, Gary Scizor, and he lost that one. So, really, his win-loss ratio was, like, 50-50. So, yeah, on to the next one. Number seven is Tauros. Tauros is actually, like, a pretty cool Pokemon, because he's, like, a bull Pokemon. Yeah. Like, despite the fact that Ash had to catch 30 of them in the banned episode. I'm not gonna go into details about, like, what the banned episode was, like, about. Like, that made it banned or something, but... Pew, 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 pew. That's your clue. Uh, go search up Pokemon Band episodes and you'll see what I mean by that. The innuendo. Uh, yeah. Uh, despite the fact that Ash had to catch thirty of them, it's they're all they're actually like pretty cool Pokemon. Not gonna lie, Taurus is a really cool Pokemon. Just actually kind of sad that like he lose that like they lose all the time, or like some of them lose because Ash, Ash never had like thirty battles with like his thirty different Tauros. So <laughs> imagine if he did like. Like, he, he battled with Tauros, like, 30 times, and each one of them was, like, a different Tauros. That's awesome. Number six is Squirtle. Now, Squirtle is, like, a, a really good Pokemon, like, despite, like, the stupid reason to, like, go put up fires with his old Squirtle squad for, like, Officer Jenny. Like, which I thought that he left, that, like, he left the Squirtle squad to go, like, tr to go, like, battle with Ash. Like, I felt like he gave up on, like, the Squirtle squad or something. Like, why? I don't know why, like, he would just return to doing that when he already has, like, a good career as Ash's... Pokemon, but whatever. 
still a good Pokemon. I mean, it did, it did return a couple of times, but basically that's still it was still like a, I still can't remember a stupid reason that like it went to go it went back to his old Squirrel Squad. Oh god. Okay. Number five is Bulbasaur. We're entering the top five now, and Bulbasaur is a very good Pokemon. I like how like he's like the Doctor Phil of like Professor Oak's lab. If you don't know what I mean, uh, one time when Ash was like in journal, he got a call per from Professor Oak, and like he needed to like borrow. Nah, why do I do quotation marks? He needed to borrow, uh, Bulbasaur from Ash because, because the Pokemon in like his at his like lab are like fighting and stuff, and he, he needs Ash's Bulbasaur to like calm it down. But like. Couldn't, like, Professor Oak, like, use, like, another, like, persons who would, like, like, couldn't, like, why did Professor Oak have to specifically ask for Ash's Bulbasaur when, like, there are probably, like, a lot of other, like, Bulbasaurs that, like, trainers have left there? Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't really make all that sense, but whatever. I mean, due to Bulbasaur, like, being, like, only, like, I mean, it refused to evolve. That's actually pretty cool. But because it didn't evolve, it's mostly, like, outclassed with all the other, like, fully evolved Pokemon. Like, Kingler, Charizard, Muck, Tauros. Well, Tauros doesn't have an evolution or a pre-evolution, so... Good. You know, a pre-evolution for Tauros is a really good idea, I'm not gonna lie. So, yeah. Number... number Bulbasaur is good for... Good, but not, like, that good. But he's pretty decent. Average. Number four is Charizard. Now, if I didn't put Charizard in at least the top five, people are gonna hate me and dislike the video and unsubscribe and and turn off notifications and probably like delete YouTube from like their phones or something. So I had to put it here. Charizard is a really powerful Pokemon, despite his like disobedience and like, despite his disobedience in like the Indigo League, like really no joke. Like once like he evolved into Charmeleon, like. He just like didn't want to listen to Ash, and when he evolved into like Charizard, it went even it, it went more downhill. Yeah, like Charizard would just barely not even listen to like Ash, and it was just so like annoying to like watch. Like, what were the writers thinking when they made a really awesome Pokemon like Charizard just not listen to Ash? Well, that well they kept doing it until like the, until like uh. Until Johto, where, like, they realized that they've been treating, like, Charizard like a piece of crap and, like, decided to actually make it listen to Ash for once. And then they continued to listen to Ash and became one of Ash's best Pokemon. So, yeah. Charizard are really powerful Pokemon. But you know, but you want to know who's even more powerful? Primeape. Primeape is a really powerful Pokemon, despite us, like, never getting to, like, see us again. And I forgot to mention number three is Primeape, so, yeah. Despite, like, it only had, like, I think, like, two battles and, like, a few battles during, like, that, like, sumo tournament, was it? The P1 Grand Prix or something? What was it called? Uh, yeah, and then, like, he, and then Ash left it with, like, that, like, uh, the, like, fire gun, even with the Hitmonchan and the Hitmonlee, or was it just a Hitmonchan? I don't even know. Yeah, but whatever. It's still a really awesome Pokemon. Prime is a really cool Pokemon, in my opinion. Number two is Kingler. Kingler is honestly very powerful. Like, like, it took out, like, three of a trainer's Pokemon, and then, like, evolved after, like, defeating one of them. Which is pretty insane. Which must mean that, like, before, like, Ash caught Krabby, Krabby had to, like, win, like, a bunch of battles with our trainer. And that's actually really awesome, not gonna lie. I mean, Ash did technically defeat Krabby with, like, a stick or something. So, how's that possible? Don't get it, but whatever. Honestly, Kingler is, like, very underrated, not gonna lie. I mean, there are a bunch of videos of people talking about why Kingler is underrated, and I agree with all of those terms. Kingler is just very underrated. And number one is, you guessed it, my man, Snorlax. Why did I say it like that? Snorlax is very powerful except the orange, in every region, except the Orange Islands, because, like, for some reason, like, during the Orange Islands, he was just, like, asleep for, like, most of it. Like, like when he woke up and Joe Chun was like, what did I miss? <laughs> yeah. He, like, he was very powerful during, like, the Silver Conference and, like, the gym battle against Claire. Uh, he was, uh, very powerful in the Battle Frontier, you know, and, like, when he defeated two fighting-type Pokemon, which was Medicham, with, which was Medicham and Hariyama. Uh, he was also, like, uh, very powerful in Sinnoh, even though we only got to see him participate in one battle, but he still won the battle. And then, I don't think we ever, like, physically, like, saw him, like, again after like that he like never had like another battle after that which is weird because why couldn't why couldn't we do, we need more snorlax because like snorlax is really powerful and amazing we need snorlax give me snorlax 
Yeah, so uh, Snorlax is a very powerful Pokemon, and it's number one for my favorite Ash Ketchum Kanto Pokemon. You know, the po and my favorite. Oh my god, my favorite Pokemon that Ash caught in, well, not really Kanto, but the Orange Islands are technically part of Kanto, if you want to call them that. If you want to call that. So, uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to check out my post on Strapple, link is in the description. Be sure to subscribe, like the video, and like share this video to your friends, and turn on notifications so I can get closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to 1,000 subscribers. And if you subscribe and like the video and share it with your friends and like turn on notifications, you're helping me a lot to reach. To, to reach 1,000 subscribers. I'll see you guys next time. Oh, wait, I didn't stop.